Okay. Well, this is Alex Howard from O'Reilly Media. We're here on the second day of the Open Government Partnership Annual Meeting in Brasilia. With me, I have Rakesh Rajani, who is, uh, as I have come to learn, an important voice in civil society in this area. Uh, one of the things that is notable to me, having gone to any number of open government conferences and symposia, is the role that civil society has played here. Literally has often had an equal foot on stage to be on the panels, to have, have equal places in the breakouts, um, to be um, an important voice in talking about the realities of open government. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, where you see civil society playing a role in holding uh, the different leaders who've spoken so expansively about their plans to account? Thank you, yes. I mean, I think this is what makes OGP unusual, that right mm -hmm. from the outset, it's been a partnership on an equal footing between government and civil society. And, uh, and I think that characteristic permeates a, a new way of kind of doing business. Um, in, in this partnership, you know, government has its role, civil society has its role, and one of the one of the roles of civil society is to is to hold governments accountable, to hold their feet to the fire, but to do it in a way that is not just focused on throwing stones or just being critical for the sake of being critical, but focusing on getting things done. Mm. And I think at the end, what's happening is governments realize and civil society realize that in the long term, it's their interest to get things done for citizens. And that's what brings us together. So to get back to an important uh, definitional question, uh, someone who's just tuning into the live stream, can you explain what civil society constitutes to you? Oh, I think that's a long discussion. <laughs> but in the, in the end, for mm. me, the, uh, let me, let me answer it in this way, that I think what really matters is citizens. Mm. OGP is about redefining the, the nature of relationship between states and their citizens. Civil society organizations worth their salt, what we should be held accountable to is are we, in a sense, in creating space, enabling space, not for ourselves as NGOs or civil society organizations to hog that space, mm. but rather are we creating space and opportunities in which ordinary citizens, you know, young men and women in villages, in urban areas, older people, younger folks, all kinds of people are able to have practical ways in which mm. they can interface with their government and help get things done, hold their governments accountable, find out what's going on, and, and you know, be part of writing history. Now, uh, it's been said that uh, journalists write the rough draft of history. Increasingly, as more of us uh, have the ability to publish ourselves, often through smartphones now, or through feature phones, through texts, we're all writing that collaboratively. Mm -hmm. um, what's the responsibility of uh, citizens and people in civil society uh, to be accurate in writing? Uh, to be, uh, uh, in, in I, I say this from um, the fears I hear from people in government, um, about the release of information or about uh, people getting inaccurate information based upon it. You know, is, is does what, what does civil society need to do in the context of this new information environment? Look, the, 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 the issue on what information is credible, the curation of information, having to deal with people who will go off and say whatever they want is an age-old problem. Mm. I don't think it's a new problem today. And the, what is clear is that the answer to that is not to clamp down. Mm. Um, people are intelligent. Uh, I think the, the answer to bad information is more information. And then people will make a choice. If somebody goes off and says something that makes no sense, if somebody makes claims that have no basis, the best way to counter that is to have more space in which people can make claims that make sense. So in a marketplace of ideas, in a marketplace of evidence, people will look at it and will make the right decisions about what's credible and what isn't. So it sounds like you'd be a staunch free speech advocate. Uh, many people I know who are... Uh, huge proponents of the First Amendment in the United States say the answer to bad speech is more of it. Absolutely. I think that's, that's also, it's, you can't do it any other way because when you try to censor, first, it doesn't succeed, particularly in this day and age. And secondly, it, you cause so much other problems that the ability to censor uh, historically has always meant that all kinds of good stuff is cut out mm. and it, it doesn't work. So I, I think uh, it's not practical, but it's also much more effective to respond to bad speech with better speech. Now, as we sit here, uh, we're almost through these two days, but uh, as you know, open government is uh, something that's now a global conversation and ongoing, and when we leave here, um, there'll start to be some uh, discussion about what happened. Um, as you look back on your experience here, what are the trends that excite you, and what are the ones that worry you? At this conference? Or yes. At the well, I mean, I, th I think what is really exciting is to see some of the ways in which people are getting this, 
uh, making stuff happen. There's innovations. I mean, I was I know nothing about Georgia, and yet the the Prime Minister of Georgia here was just bubbling with enthusiasm about mm. the ideas and innovations. Well, now perhaps I don't know. In reality, they are not as great as they sound like uh, when you presented them. But I think that's exciting that there is leaders that are, that mm. are trying to do things. Uh, we heard other leaders. Um, the president of Tanzania made a certain number of commitments. Now. I'm Tanzanian, I know mm. we have a long way to go, but the fact that he's being somehow inspired, somehow that this process is making him have greater aspirations mm. and want to stretch and do better, I think is a great sign. And, yes. and what is also wonderful is that, is that civil society is creating very, very practical ways in which citizens can interface with government in a way that isn't threatening necessarily. Mm. It's about, look, let's be real, let's focus on issues, let's focus on outcomes and get things done. So for me, um, what I what I love is this pragmatic nature. It's mm. not about just uh, you know holding a flag up and making a statement for the s you know for the sake of making a statement. It's about look, we have common problems, we have common challenges. There's a lot of work to be done. OGP provides a platform, a particularly mm. wonderful, open, effective, pragmatic platform, in which we can do that. And I think we we now have ideas. Before before OGP was a, was a kind of commitment in principle. Mm. Uh, uh, sharing of values. What is happening now is there is a kind of concretization of that. About how do you operation? How does the rubber hit the road? How do you make this come home and become real? And now I think we have a growing level of kind of uh, examples and experience that we can build on. Are there any particular examples of civil society having success holding government to account that you learned about here that you'll take home and uh, share on? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the example, for example, of MKSS in India continues mm. to, to inspire many of us all the time. Uh, so that, that would be, I think, one clear one. I think the budget work that the partners of the International Budget Partnership are doing, I think, is really important in terms of uh, you know, auditing, for instance, in terms of making budgets more transparent and open. Um, I think the work on resource transparency is becoming an increasingly important one. And what I'm seeing now is how do you have, again, a partnership with groups such as Revenue Watch mm. and governments where they come together, not in an adversarial way, but in a way that says, look, these are huge amount of national resources. How can we get a grip on them? How can we get our heads around on that? And so there's lots of examples around those issues. Um, and increasingly, I think now the, the um, aid transparency stuff is also for those, for those countries mm. like Tanzania that are heavily aid dependent. It also helps to kind of follow the money and where, where it's going. Mm. Well, thank you so much for that and for your insight. Uh, for people who are interested, you can follow him at Rakesh Rajani on Twitter. Uh, you should definitely take a look at his work in Tanzania and uh, certainly your words uh, at the launch of the Open Government Partnership, which uh, continue to inspire people around the world. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much for the work you're doing. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.